Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're taking a look at GoCollect's hottest trending comics for the week of March 12th. Now, for those who don't know, GoCollect puts out weekly articles. They analyze the hottest selling comic books based on volume of sales and sudden increase in movement in the market. So think of these books as the most liquid out there this past week. But before I get into it, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe for enjoying the content, help support the channel, do those things, I'd appreciate it. And also, don't forget, Sanity Kickstarter out now. Best Lovecraftian pulp adventure comic book ever written by somebody named Swaggle Haas. Link in the description. All right, let's get back into the article here. Now, I will put a link in the description to the article as well if you guys want to do your own reading. Of course, this article is always written by Matt Tuck, but I will give it my breakdown right now. And coming in at the number five spot is a personal villain favorite book of mine here, but we got to talk about Daredevil number 131. New to the list this week, now sitting in the 69th slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, it's the book that came out in 1976, written by Marv Wolfman, that would feature the first appearance of the villain character known as Bullseye. Now, as we all know, next year, we're going to be getting the Daredevil Born Again series on Disney+. Plus, and there's been a lot of excitement for all of the characters, all of the Daredevil books that have been out there in the market. Of course, you know, we recently got the announcement of John Bernthal returning as the Punisher, and he will be making an appearance in the Daredevil show as well. And with all this news and hype and talk, there's been a lot of speculation that, of course, Bullseye is going to be a character showing up in the show as well. So this book has been recently picking up in the market. Now, we all remember from Daredevil on the Netflix series, uh, they actually were setting up Bullseye to eventually play a role in that show. Uh, you know, at the time, the Bullseye character was actually just in the Daredevil costume. So it does kind of beg the question, you know, are they going to bring over that actor? Are they actually going to make reference to the Netflix show? On the one hand, we think that it's somewhat related to the Netflix show, but on the other hand, it's a totally different universe. Hard to really tell how the MCU is going to play it. But I do think that most collectors feel like it's a very safe bet that Bullseye will be showing up. And I actually do think that Bullseye, uh, especially right now, is kind of an underrated book, underrated villain, and definitely has the potential to really break out into pop culture. I think Bullseye is really badass and being a prominent street level villain that maybe one day could eventually, you know, come to the MCU and then be a part of the Thunderbolts team, uh, whatever they decide to do with that team in the future, uh, it really, really makes this book very, very interesting. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, Let's take a look at some of the values here. CGC Census has this at 3,729 universal copies. 9.8s have 100 on the census. Fair market value is 57.50. There hasn't been a sale in the last, you know, about six months or so. So let's go down here to the 9.6. Uh, census has this at 263. Fair market value is 1,200. 30 day moving is 1,200 as well. And like many other books, of course, this is one that, again, Heavily speculated on, big bump in 2021, big pullback uh, in 2022, and kind of where it sits now is still above the floor values that it had in 2020. And then of course, you know, down here at the bottom, not gonna always see it slapped at the low grade being that it is a 1976 book. But when you go into eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, typically they're still gonna set you back around that 200 or maybe even $250 range. All right, let's move on now to the fourth hottest trending comic of the week. And the fourth hottest trending comic of the week is one that is a very cool book, one that kind of pops in and out of trending comic books, you know, time and time again, but it makes sense why it's showing up here. This one, of course, is Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars number seven, new to the list this week, now sitting in the 30th slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1984, written by Jim Shooter, and would feature the first appearance of the Julia Carpenter version of Spider-Woman. Now, as we all know, the Sony Universe is still doing its thing. They have their Madam Web movie coming out sometime at the top of next year, I believe that is currently scheduled for. And there's been currently an announcement or at least some rumors, some speculation that apparently Sidney Sweeney, who we know is going to be playing a part in that film, has been cast as Spider-Woman. Now, we don't exactly know which specific Spider-Woman she is going to be, but there's a lot of people thinking that she might be doing the Julia Carpenter version, which of course is why this book is so hot this week. And I actually think that the Julia Carpenter version of Spider-Woman is very, very interesting. In fact, uh, you know, I'm of the era that kind of grew up around the Secret Wars time and, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s. And I actually thought that Spider-Woman was the Julia Carpenter one. Like Jessica Drew Spider-Woman was a, a little older than my time. So I always ha identified Spider-Woman with sort of having the black suit design. And I actually think that this character has a lot of potential. Of course, she, you know, in that 
that time frame was you know associated with the West Coast Avengers, was associated with the regular Avengers. And it is interesting to think about, you know, later on when we get Secret Wars, are we going to be getting a lot of these Sony Universe characters porting over to the MCU? You know, maybe Spider-Woman is going to be a Marvel figurehead for quite some time in the future. So for that reason, this is a very, very exciting book and one that has been moving a lot in the market. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. CGC Census has this at 2,339 universal copies. Not too many, but there's actually one 9.9 on the census. Would be interesting to see what that would go for today. 9.8 is not too expensive. 716 on the census. Fair market value is 220. Third day moving right in line to that at 222. Again, another book that, like many others, had its big spike ups, had actually a lot of spike ups uh, in the past. I think that there were other times in this book's history and life cycle where there was a lot of speculation of Spider Woman coming. And that's one of the things with this uh, type of book is that, you know, generally speaking, uh, there's a lot of copies out there, especially a lot of raw copies out there. So it's going to be pretty tumultuous uh, being kind of a popular Copper Age book. Then down here at the bottom, not going to see it slabbed at the low grade, particularly speaking when you go onto eBay looking for raw copies, you can see them being sold around that 15, 20, 25 dollar range, depending on the deal and depending on the day. All right, let's move on now to the third hottest trending comic of the week. And the third hottest trending comic of the week is another goodie here, one that has certainly been popular recently, although Matt has it on this list for sort of a dubious distinction, but it's actually trending in the wrong direction. This, of course, is Avengers number 267, minus 18 spots, now down to the 27th slot. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, it's the book that came out in 1986, written by Roger Stern, that would feature the first appearance of the Council of Kangs. Now, as Matt points out in the article, the reason why he decided to include it in the list this week is because the book is trending, just trending very much on the down direction. He thought that was kind of an interesting thing to talk about. Of course, we know this book really, really shot up thanks to the appearance of the Council of Kangs in the Ant-Man film. I think it's been long enough of a time frame to where I can kind of, quote unquote, spoil that for some of you guys out there. But for that reason, this book has been moving a lot in the market. Of course, it was moving a lot in the market all the way back in 2021 when we had Loki uh, season one. And this is one of those books where it's like, you know, because of the print count, because of the fact that it's, you know, around this time frame of book, there's a lot of raw copies out there, not a lot of people who had always been, you know, collecting this thing. So it's going to have a very, very tumultuous journey. And as we can see now that we're on the other end of Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania, we are on the downswing for this book. I'm sure, you know, throughout the years and lead up to Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars, this book is going to have, you know, more relevancy and then less relevancy. But for now, it is the third, quote unquote, hottest comic of the week. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. CGC Census has this at 762 universal copies. 9.8s have 135. Fair market value is 280. 30 day moving is still 288. So higher than it was again at the top of the year because of Kang Dynasty. But you can see, you know, a couple of sales for this book were just absolutely out of control. I mean, I don't even know if this is, you know, real accurate data here from Go Collect at the $1,400 range, unless that was like a newsstand copy that sold, you know, astronomically. But generally speaking, you can see that it's a book that does get hot and does go cold again and again. Down here at the bottom, not going to see it's lab at the low grade. But when you go into eBay looking for raw copies, typically you can see them being sold around that $25, $30, maybe even $40 price point, depending on the grade that you're looking at. All right, let's move on now to the second hottest trending comic of the week. And the second hottest trending comic of the week is a personal favorite of mine, an old goodie right here. And I think one that Matt actually forgot to update here. But this one, of course, is Incredible Hulk number 340 up who knows how many spots. Matt says no change, but I think that that's actually a typo. Now sitting in the 24th slot, and what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is a book that came out in 1988, drawn by Tom McFarlane that would feature the iconic cover art and the second battle between Incredible Hulk and Wolverine. Now, of course, you guys know this book by now, a classic Tom McFarlane piece, and actually we're going to be talking about the newsstand edition version of this one, because this one comes out in a year where newsstands do start to get, you know, slightly more rare. It's 1988. You know, this is when things started to turn the corner. Around 1986 is typically where I say that, you know, newsstands started to turn the corner. And this book does, in fact, command a premium at the newsstand level. But as to why it's significant this week, well, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that one, this book is just always very, very popular. And two, you know, that we're still getting the teases for Hugh Jackman Wolverine returning to the MCU in the Deadpool movie. There's been leaks of him, you know, having workouts, you know, him getting super, super buffed. There's also been talks of a Wolverine video game, uh, the same company that created the Miles Morales video game and the Spider-Man video game. That was actually a huge hit, is soon gonna be launching the Wolverine video game. And that'll be interesting 
interesting to think about as well because you know sometimes the video games can have effects on values of comic books as well. So there's still a lot of touch points in culture right now for Wolverine and everybody is still accumulating a lot of those Wolverine books. I'm not going to belabor it because we're still going to talk about another one coming up soon. But as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. CGC census, hard to say what the newsstands are, but let's focus in on the actual values. 9.8's fair market value is 3,800. 30 day moving is also 3,800. To put that into perspective, the direct version additions for this book probably are right now selling around that anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 level. So this is a book that basically sells, you know, twice the price point for that of the direct edition. And actually you've been able to see, you know, because this book is much more rare, you know, you only see this book sell, you know, every few months or so, specifically at the 9.8 range. So, you know, the floor value is going to be able to hold for this thing uh, because, you know, no one is going to be able to undercut you. 9.4, 30 day moving for that is around the $366 range. I believe the direct edition counterpart would sell probably around the 280 range, you know, at that price point. Uh, 9.2 is 294. Again, I think the direct edition counterpart would probably sell around the $200 price point. But, you know, being a 1988 book, still not going to see slab newsstands at the low grade. But when you go into eBay looking for raw copies of newsstands, typically you can see them around that $100 to $110 price point. All right, let's move on now to the hottest trending comic of the week. And the hottest trending comic of the week is another Wolverine book, a classic Frank Miller story here. But we got to talk about Wolverine limited series number one, up two spots, now sitting in the number five slot, a top five book out there in the market. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the book that came out in 1982, written by Chris Claremont and drawn by Frank Miller, that would feature the first limited series for the character Wolverine. Now, like I already mentioned, a lot of hype out there still for Wolverine, you know, people getting excited about all of the Hugh Jackman workouts. And even outside of all of that, this is always going to be a book that is always in demand, always, always popular in the market. And actually it's interesting to see this book on the trending list this week because I had just released that video uh, yesterday about the Shortbox app and going through some of their data of what kind of books that they've been seeing move out there in the market. And Wolverine, of course, is a top five Bronze Age character that always sells. And if you actually adjust for value, uh, he jumps up to the number two spot. And it has a lot to do with this book right here. You know, this one is always going to be in demand. People are always going to be wanting to pick this up. It looks great on a shelf. One of the best Wolverine books that you can get. Probably one of the best, you know, Frank Miller books to get signed. Uh, you know, a lot of people do the really cool stuff where they have him sign on the claws or, you know, across the uh, crown of his hair. You know, so that is always really, really cool. And being that Wolverine is everybody's favorite mutant character, this is always going to be one of the hottest books out there. And as we dig into the numbers for this one, let's take a look at some of the values here. CG Census has this at 20,000. 350 copies out there. A lot of copies out there. A lot of people that want it in their collection. 10.0s actually have three on the census. There was a sale in 2009 for 15,500. That would be really cool to see what that would go for today. 9.9s actually have 27 on the census, selling around the $2,700 range back in 2019. 9.8s have 3,707 on the census. Fair market value is 725. 30 day moving right in line to that. Again, another book like many others that has had its pullback, had its correct after the boom in 2021. But again, the floor values are still a lot higher than that of 2020 and 2019. 9.6 is 5,000 on the census. Fair market value is 300, 30 day moving 300. 9.4 is 30 day moving 194. And then of course, down here at the bottom, 1982 book. Not gonna see it slabbed at the low grade, but typically speaking, when you go on to eBay, looking for raw copies of this thing, you can see them being sold around that 80, 90, 100, maybe $125 level, depending on the deal and depending on the grade that you can find for yourself. Anyways, that's all for this video. Those were GoCollect's hottest trending comics for the week. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have any of these books? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content. I'll see you in the next video.